Hi, I'm Matthew with Lean's Creative Living. Since I've been working here, I've seen a lot of great crafts on the show. Can't wait to see what's on the show today, so let's get started. Welcome to Aline's Creative Living. We've got a great show planned for you today and we're glad you're here to spend it with us. We've got all kinds of exciting things coming up and take a look at this great vest. This is wonderful. It is a Dress Heidi outfit. You know the whole month of September is the contest at Dress Heidi and today's entry, um, the winning entry for Dress Heidi is Karen Sweeney Justice from Oneida, Tennessee. Wow, nice? Karen did an outstanding job. There's three-dimensional paint on there, isn't there? There is. You know, it's kind of hard to see, probably with a camera, but it is there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see the little shininess there. I like this pin here. It looks like she used to shrink it and trace the pattern. She did. And then isn't have, that cool? Yeah. Because mm. it holds it together. Look at wow. this. Wow. Hey, that's pin neat. On each side that's and holds it together. And she didn't have to make buttonholes. That's no. always a good thing. <laughs> How clever. And actually, really cute. she sent in two vests for me and two vests for Skylar. Wow. And um, it says, for the Dress Heidi contest, I've entered two handmade vests. One is a piece creation done with fusible web. So this is done with fusible web. Decorated along the front with dimensional fabric paint and closed with a trinket uh, pin clasp. Yes. And um, I don't know how to say thank you for all the wonderful craft ideas and hours of pleasure that I've gotten since discovering your television show and magazine oh. when I moved to Tennessee two years ago. How nice. Mine is certainly one of the lives that you have changed through creativity. Regardless of whether any of these clothing pieces is selected as a contest win winner, I'm happy to use my creative imagination to help others. Oh, isn't that wonderful? That's well, great. she really inspires us. It's, it's our viewers that keep us going, yes. you know it? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. We also want to thank Carol Jasinski from Pins Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Carol has created, a, we have this, they're kind of home movies of Skylar that we took a little <laughs> bit earlier, in this darling outfit with the doilies and the little oh, hat. Cute, what a cute. wonderful dress for this little princess to prance around in. Thank you so much for your entry. It just makes the contest so much fun. Just full of love, isn't That's it? That's right. Well, it on good. today's show, Heidi is going to turn, the amazing Heidi is going to turn a brown grocery <laughs> bag into an elegant guest. Angel. Angel. <laughs> Who'd have thought? And we're all a flutter waiting to see Mary Oskamp's beautiful butterflies. And today we'll discover a fashionable alternative to those plain black drugstore magnifiers. Okay. Ooh, won't that be cool? <laughs> well, hey, i got to go do something. Get ready for it. Oh, exactly. Crap, crap. <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> And if you're a Winnie the Pooh fan, you probably know there aren't very many designs out there for crafting until now. Paulette Jarvie will be here with a brand new line of craft kits featuring Pooh. That's right, and we can't wait to get going with today's show. Patty's going to start us off with some fabulous floral delights. Do you ever wish that you could just bring a little bit of that French country into your home? Well, this is the way to do it. We've got some great projects that I want to show you today that Darcy Lett and I put together for a book. This is something that's very unusual. It is actually styrofoam cut into letters for Roman numerals, and you can put it up on your wall in any type of fashion that you like. It's really a nice accent. And then look at this wreath. I can really imagine this above your dining room table or even above a fireplace. Now, that's an empty container there. That happens to be a peach tea that I love to drink, but you could put a, like a wine bottle in there too. Now we've also got this fiery red urn filled with protea. This is gorgeous for the fall of the year. You would really love this for your home. And I'm gonna show you how that's made in the, uh, just a minute. Um, let's see, what else do we have? This is beautiful. This is like a fireplace centerpiece. You know, sometimes you have your fireplace open in the winter or the summer and you don't have a fire there. This is perfect to set inside the, your fireplace. Now let me show you some things here on the table. Let's get back to this urn. This urn is really, really pretty, but now it's a little bit expensive. You would probably need about $100 to spend with this project, and I'm gonna show you how it's made. 
Let me pull this one out here. These would look beautiful on either side of the fireplace to have, to have two matching ones. And then you could have the other one in the center. Or this would even be pretty on the mantle on each end. Now let's peel this up. I want to show you the works. What I've done is just take a large styrofoam ball and place it in the urn first. Now I'm showing you this after the fact. And then you just glue it into the urn. Well, let me show you what has happened. Is you take the urn and fill it full of hot glue around the edges to place your styrofoam in it. Just like this. Then the Aline's Ultimate Glue Gun is perfect for this with her glues, with her floral glues. Then you just push it into the glue, like so. All right. Now I've got a gap here that I want to fill up with some more protea. Now the protea comes several in a package, and you cut their stems off to just about a one and a half inch length, and then you poke them right into the styrofoam. Very simple. And you just keep going until you're completely finished. Now I'm showing you this actually in the reverse of what I did it because whenever I put it together, I put the first row around the edge and then ended up with the very tall one in the top. Let me show you how this looks. Isn't this great? Now you would need to cover your styrofoam first with a, a moss so that you don't see any of it, the styrofoam, when you're completely finished just like this looks. Isn't that great? Now the one that's made for the fireplace has got wheat all through it. And you know, wheat is a symbol of welcome in your home. So this would make a beautiful uh, accent to your fireplace. And I also want to show you before we get to the book, another idea. We have the little spiral candlestick back here. And what we've placed in it before was the, um, the ball. It's just a styrofoam ball covered with moss, and then honeysuckle vine is wrapped around it. Well, if you don't like that idea, or maybe you need two pieces, then just take the same idea and place it in an urn. Isn't that simple? And it's very, very elegant and really classy. Now, what I would think would be really nice is to take a candlestick and an urn, and then maybe another urn or candlestick, and make a trio of these moss balls. Be beautiful. Before we run out of time, I want to show you these great pictures down here. They don't have a glass in them because what we did was we made little alphabets. This is the W and the Y, of course, with just the leaves, the dried leaves. Now, all these ideas can be found in this wonderful, delightful book, and it shows you everything you need to put it together. And I hope that you'll want one of these for your coffee table today. Coming up next, we'll have some easy-to-make angels with Heidi. Angels abound here at Aline's Creative Living. Heidi, you are so creative. Well, thank you. This is a wonderful technique that I'm going to show you using brown bag. Now, this is not burnt brown bag. This is something completely different. It's textured brown bag. You are the brown bag <laughs> queen or princess or something. I think I'm the princess because mom's the queen. <laughs> okay. If uh, All I wanted to do today was just show you this technique because it's just absolutely incredible that you can use it on brown bag. And just use a little bit of the Aline's um, fabric stiffener and uh, pour a little bit out on your brown bag. What I did first was I made it and then I... Um, I kind of did this texture to it. Oh, so you did the finished design and then just added Oops. some dimension to it. Yeah. Okay. And what you're going to do is just kind of either brush it on or squeegee it on, whatever you can do. And I used this because I knew that it was going to be hard when I was done and it was going to be like a ceramic. And uh, I used just the tops to pins. <laughs> Here, I'll let you help. Okay. And just start. Look at that. Isn't that cool? This is great. You could use any shape to mm -hmm. create Anything these. Anything you can. You could even probably fold cardboard and. Uh... Oh, look, I'm making grapes. <laughs> oh, that's a new design. It is. We could oh. do grapes. But isn't that neat? I can't yeah. stop, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you do after this is let it dry completely, and it dries clear. And what I did then was I, I painted a uh, coat of uh, kind of like a, brand, a beige paint over it, and then I antiqued it with a little bit of brown paint that I had water in it and just washed it over and then wiped it off. And then everywhere that I had the texture, that's where you're seeing the antiquing look. 
You know, this, would, this is one of those projects that makes a wonderful conversation piece because no one can imagine how you've created it so you I can share that. your ideas. Isn't that neat? Wow. You, you know where this comes from? <gasps> this comes from I, a wonderful <laughs> book. <laughs> It is from Angels Made Easy. I have to put this other angel back that's jumping. They're flying around Aline's over here. Aline's Angels Made Easy by Heidi. Yes. It's a wonderful book. It has almost, I think it's like 45 different angel projects in it. Wonderful. And uh, the next project that uh, I brought are these great boxes. And you can take gift or card boxes that you usually get cards in, and you can make them look pretty by putting, there's this is wax paper and, uh, and gift wrap paper, and you do it on the inside. Is that oh pretty? wow! You know, I always want to save those card boxes, but they're never really that exciting. But this is a wonderful way to decorate them. And then use napkins and tissue paper on your using the box maker. And Isn't that fun? and then what you end up with is a box or a gift that people have to save so that they can give it out to their friends as well. Mm -hmm. And here's the page in the Aline's Angels Made Easy. This shows the napkin here. And, and this project over here, and then here's the wonderful gift box. You know, when I'm with you, Heidi, I want to save everything <laughs> because there's some great bad, project huh? <laughs> we're going to make out of it. No, I'm just running out of space at home. <laughs> Candles are wonderful to add a little angel touch to, a little of the gold paper lace, and uh, some uh, decals make a beautiful candle. And certainly a great gift. Definitely. People love gifts like this. Definitely. And to how about these pins, or even you could use these for gift tags. Yes. Um, these are out of the little wood seeds. And we wanted to, in this book, we wanted to show different angel animals because everyone loves animals. Oh, I and like the, the cow's nose. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. They're very it's whimsical. And they, these are little pin-ons. Like you said, they could be little package tops. Or you could use them as pins, put them as a package top, and then you've given a gift with your package. And I can just look at these and see how much fun you had creating they them. They are so cute. An angel kitty and an angel cow. And an angel bear. And an angel bear. Okay, okay let's see. Yeah, this is a favorite of mine and mom's, and that's the brown bag um, sculpture. All this is, again, is out of brown bag. And just by sponge painting, I didn't even burn this. I just sponge painted. I painted really? the whole brown bag black first, mm -hmm. and then went over and sponge painted it. And all my details I did with the um, 3D foiling glue. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that wonderful? It's just a wonderful sculpture. It'd be real pretty, at, you know, like in a sofa table or, you know, coming in. And you can use these all year long or do them in holiday colors. Well, you could also use this same technique and create plant picks or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So do we have a few minutes we could go through the whole book? Yes, let's do. There are so many beautiful Ooh. projects. Oh, look at that one. I haven't seen that one windows? before. Absolutely. Just, Heidi? It's, it's amazing. I, every time I look at it, I, I just love it. But that's why it's so great, because it flowed through you mm -hmm. and your incredible talent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up next, we have more crafting just for you. I am just amazed that people can actually make wonderful garments like this, especially with the help of Janome. And Sue Thornton Gray is here to show us how. Hi, Sue. Hi, Patty. How are you doing today? Good. Isn't this just cute? Yes. This was made by a fellow educator, Cheryl Capps, and it's a little boy's baptism. You know, I have really featured a lot on baptism or christening gowns for little girls. But yes. When I saw this, I said, oh, I just have to borrow it. I have to borrow it. <laughs> Well, you're right. Finding things for little boys is a real a, a challenge sometimes. Right, right. The fabric is Imperial Batiste. Uh -huh. um, you know, nothing real special, but of course the decorative work yes. and the little blue with that little feather stitch is just what really makes it. Really, it's really so makes soft, it. Sue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes <laughs> things are so stiff and we're working so hard to make them pretty, we forget <laughs> that they need to feel good. Yep, they need to feel good. That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, today we're going to be featuring the Memory Craft 3000, which is one of the promotional machines that we have right now okay. at uh, participating Janome dealers. And I just want to show you how very, very simple it is to create that little collar and to give you a hint that Cheryl gave me that I think is wonderful. All right. First of all, you'd go ahead and cut out your collar pieces. Now, when we're working on infant wear, I normally do not interface. You oh. know, that is something that usually patterns will tell you is to put in some type of interfacing. Yes. But once again, to, to stay with the softness of the finished project, I do, did not interface at all. Okay. That's a good tip. And the next we're going to go to the sewing machine. But before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about the F foot. Now, what okay. is the F foot for? 
Fun. fun. Anytime, <laughs> we, anytime we do anything that is fun, we do an F foot. Now, inside the center here, I'm going to see if I can point this out. You will find a little tiny arrow. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Cheryl gave me the idea that you go ahead with a permanent marker and you darken in oh. that arrow so that when you place it on your sewing machine, especially when you're doing decorative work, which I'm going to show you here in just a second, you can see exactly where you're sewing. Oh, that's a wonderful and idea. it worked out wonderful. Good. So now we're going to go ahead over to the Memory Craft 3000, and I'm going to snap off my A foot, or all-purpose foot, and I'm going to put it away in my parking garage. <laughs> it is nice for sewers if we have a place for everything, yes. and we have a parking garage, plus we have a little storage area oh underneath my. our free arm. So when we go to look for something, we know where to find it. I love that idea. And we're going to go ahead and snap on our F foot, just as simple as that. And then we're going to place our threads behind. Now we're going to go over to the touch panel. Now we have our variety of stitches that are available. We have, of course, you know, straight stitches. Plus on the Memory Craft 3000, we have a... Uh, an automatic buttonhole or a sensor buttonhole that's fast, quick, and easy. And uh, we have a lot of the features that are built into our top of the line sewing machine, such as needle up, down, memorize needle up, down, and our auto lock. Wow. But for our project today, we're going to go ahead and select the feather stitch. And all you need to do is to press the picture of the stitch. And each one of the panels contains three different stitches. So our feather stitch is the center one, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate until the center stitch appears. And now right on our visual screen, it tells us the stitch, it tells us the recommended foot, and recommended tension. Does it really? So, really great. Oh. So we're going to go ahead and reduce our stitch width down to 3.0, which comes right up on our screen, and we're going to reduce our stitch length oh, to about 1.5. Now that would be a personal preference. You know, right. you can adjust the width to anything that you need. And go ahead and lining up the edge of the collar with that little arrow that's so easy to see now. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is to begin to sew. And you're actually going to sew right off the edge of that collar. Oh. So that you get, can you see it? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Isn't that cute? Yes. The Memory Craft 3000 really is a nice one. It does everything you need. You betcha. Well, thanks again, Sue. You're we'll welcome, see you next Patty. week. All righty. Coming up next, we'll capture a field of beautiful butterflies with Pergamono. If you're crafting with bread dough and want to make multiple colors, it's easiest to make one batch, then divide it. Add a small amount of acrylic paint and knead in your hands until the paint is mixed in. Don't forget to store your leftover bread dough in a plastic bag. When Mary Ozcap visits, she always has beautiful handmade designs to share. She got together with Catherine recently and brought some beautiful butterfly projects that had us all a flutter. So let's take a look. Mary, there's no such thing as too many beautiful butterflies. I know, I agree. Sometimes they're called of flying jewels, or miracles of nature, and I think that's the perfect way of calling butterflies. Oh, that's a great title, and yet Pergamano is so delicate, it's a perfect complement to a butterfly. Yes, we have this wonderful new butterfly book, and I was so happy when I saw it for the first time. It has 16 patterns for cards, but it has 24 patterns to make up butterflies that you trace, color, and then emboss, but these are true to nature butter butterflies. Even the Latin name is in the book. Oh, that makes it so special. And tell me about these other things. The four strips that are pre-printed on the paper. Now these butterflies are great because you don't have to trace, you don't have to color, but you just emboss and cut them out. But I'll be showing you that later. Okay, but I do want to look at these beautiful examples. Let's look at these for a minute. Yeah. Look at this little box. I know. I love that one there. That's that's the life cycle of the butterfly 
Oh, that's a little box with the butterflies on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so then, beautiful. Yes. But I do want to look at this life cycle. Everything yes. from the little eggs. Eggs to the caterpillar to the cocoon to the chrysalis and then to the butterfly. And I thought it was just made a perfect wall hanging. It does. It does. I would love to have something like that in my home. They're just exquisite. Now I'm going to show you what I did, the line technique and one of the butterfly cards here. This one there, I used the line technique and to do that I just want to show people again, you use your uh, excellent or your, your tracing pen with a bronze nib and what you're making is fine lines close together. Now you should not have too much ink on your pen, just put very little ink. What I've done on my pattern, you're here again, you do not trace. You put your paper on your pattern and then you make your fine lines. I have, you go from light to dark. You first have I applied a layer, a, a layer of light color and now I just put a little bit of this turquoise on and make, again, you layer over that layer. To make fine lines close together. Hold your pen as perpendicular or as straight as possible and you see the nice fine lines you can make. Your inks are dual purpose, you can also paint with them. This technique makes this look like it's hand stitched. Doesn't it? Yes. Which is so gorgeous. When you take, yes, there, there is the card that they were just showing there, how to make the, how, what it looks like when it's done. Now I also want to show you today is how to use these butterfly strips because you get four of them in this kit. And so you don't have to trace, you don't have to color, but you do emboss. Embossing, I mean pressure embossing on the back, you rub it and the, the paper will stretch, it'll curve. Now I have cut out, I have taken the top wings and the body of this butterfly and cut it out. Now from the second butterfly, I would emboss and, and make those bottom wings go into the top a little bit and cut it out. And then with a Perga Kit glue, you can, this has to go this way, hmm. glue the wing the body right on top of those back wings. You know, they look like they're ready to fly right off mm -hmm. of the table. And here you see, those are all the butterflies you can make with those strips. Right, so you can make mm. more than this, but these are the four yes, different styles. Yes, those are the four different styles. Of how they looked finished. Well, I think these cards are so elegant. And uh, Martha Ospina, once again, has done such a fabulous job. Mm -hmm. Yes, as always. Okay, well, once again, we have this excellent kit with this assortment. How many butterflies can you make with the strips that come in the well, kit? Well, it takes two to make one three-dimensional one, so there's five to a, to a strip. So you can make two out of each strip plus one that you can just emboss, and it still can look real. Wonderful, Mary. Thank you so much for being here today. I was, I was happy to share it with you. Thanks for joining our family today at Aline's Creative Living. We have even more projects planned with you in mind. Your impression of reading glasses is about to change. Judy Musel from Fudspex is here and hot off the press has some hot new Woody the Pooh crafting kits. But first, Patty and Maria Narius got together recently for some creative chat about National Sewing Month. Maria, I'm so glad you're here today because I love sitting and just chatting with you. This is all about sewing today, isn't it? Yes, September is National Sewing Month, so I thought we'd focus a little bit on sewing. And one of the first things that occurs to me is we do a lot of sewing in our crafts, but sewing itself is considered an art form. I like thus, that. <laughs> right, thus it's the needle arts when you think of embroidery, sewing, hand sewing, and quilting. Well, you've got some great books with you today, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big one for books. I enjoy reading them, and I found that there is such a wide variety, especially in our public libraries, mm -hmm. books on sewing. It can be from pillows to covers to curtains that uh, sewing is very much popular in home decor decor because we can really specialize and customize these things for our own homes. Well, what's really hot right now, Maria? I think when you're looking at fabrics particularly, we have a great influence from the east our colors are getting brighter, particularly mm -hmm. inside the home. I always look at that as we're bringing the outside in, the, the bright light, and to be able to see a lot of color, it really livens us up. Mm -hmm. Quilting has never, this is a resurgence of it, it has never been this popular. You're seeing young children uh -huh. um, to our retired folks who are going back and having more leisure time activity. 
In quilting, still popular is the 100% cottons, mm -hmm. and in those you are seeing watercolors. You won't see a specific design, but it's more of a watercolor and blending mm -hmm. of really brilliant colors. Well, they're making things more portable these days. Used to you had to have a whole room set up for quilting. Now you can quilt in your lab. And what's interesting in quilting is uh, a popular collectible in quilting are the featherweight Singer machines. Oh, yes. That, um, it, it's just kind of interesting because they are so lightweight, and quilters do take a lot of classes, and they do want to travel with their work. Well, what if you want to build a business with sewing? I found a great book, and it's The Business of Sewing, and I think it's great. I did read it, and it's wonderful whether you're starting something small or you want to make it a full-time occupation. And this book really covers everything from uh, maybe a seamstress, or you want to do alterations, mm -hmm. or you want to do home decor, or dolls are very, very popular oh, now. You're right. And fabric dolls have been considered an art form, so a lot of people are selling their own character dolls. And this book is wonderful from setting up your work area to actually going and pricing either a service or the finished product. Those are so good things to know. The pricing is always the toughest it's, part. I think it's the most difficult thing when you're making something by hand. Well, thanks for all this great information and for inspiration, too. Thanks. Coming up next, we'll help you get a better perspective on your crafting. Stay tuned. Judy Musil came by recently to show us how we can see a lot more clearly and have fun at the same time with Fun Specs. Well now, Judy, I am ready for a close-up today. Don't I look good? I love that pattern. You're wearing it too. Now this is called what? This is called Rainforest and it's a very natural earthy pattern. It's got wonderful earthy colors, um, all of your natural colors, plus a little bit of olive and a burnt orange. Isn't it gorgeous? It's gorgeous, but now what is this? Is this a reading glass? These are reading glasses or magnifiers. They're half readers, so we wear them down on our nose a little bit, oh. and we don't need anything for distance. Uh -huh. And the crafters are really thrilled about the patterns that we offer. They, they love the quality of the glasses because, of course, we do have the metal hinges, mm -hmm. we have the very smooth finish, the focal points are right where they belong, and they're attracted first to the patterns I and the colors, it. but then they realize the quality is there. The quality is there, and then when I pick these up, that's what I think about is the quality. Now, are the lenses quality also? The quality are, the lenses are optical quality. We do have them checked out by a lab. Focal points are in the middle, and if you want to replace mm -hmm. these, with prescription lenses, you can. Oh, you can take a, them to your optician. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. Now tell me about these uh, packagings. Do you get all this together? Well, actually, the um, the reader comes with a matching case like this. It's a tan case. Uh -huh. We do have a matching leash yes. or a chain to go with it. It has the same colors in there. Of course, that's optional because Beautiful. not everybody wants to have a chain. You're right. Now, our operators today can really be helpful because they can help us decide what magnification we need. Mm -hmm. Or we can pick from the Get Acquainted Kit, which is a, a glasses and a case. Right. Or you've even got more here. Now, I noticed oh. these metal ones. These are gorgeous. Is this exciting? Yes. This is a teal metal reader. And what's really interesting is that you see this little stair step, step effect here yes. on the temple. It's close to the hinge. And it's just a contemporary, elegant, elegant look. It comes with a matching pearlized case. Beautiful. And the accessory, the chain that goes with this, is actually very new in our line. Yes. And it is made up of various crystals in the same family as the teal. Beautiful. You've got the, the blue, the amethyst. It's just a gorgeous silver chain with the crystals to go with it. Now, tell me about the name of this company, Fun Specs. That is adorable. How did you guys come up with that? Well, Fun Specs simply fits perfectly because our glasses are, are a lot of fun to wear. And uh, people tell us that they have so much fun wearing them that um, they notice their friends make comments about their glasses <laughs> and they say, oh, you've never had so much fun. Some of these people are very shy and they say that they have blossomed so much because they feel so special when they wear these glasses. Well, I believe it. And it's they look comfortable. Amazing. Are they as comfortable as they look? Are they comfortable? We, we had a couple of people that tried them on and said, well, when do they start to hurt? Oh. <laughs> and boy, that was the first because we've never heard that before. Wow. We had a big laugh about that because ours are always comfortable. Well, they are always comfortable, aren't they? Yes. 
Now, uh, are there some people out there that just really don't want to wear readers? They just don't want to admit that they need them? All of the beginner, the <laughs> beginner readers, really, when you <laughs> start to hit about 40, you get something that's called presbyopia, oh. which is simply a natural aging of the eyes. Uh -huh. And they are all in denial. They don't want to wear them. <laughs> but when they see our glasses, they'll walk by, look out the corner of their eyes at these glasses yeah. and then all of a sudden they pretend not to see them but they back up and they say we would love to wear these well, because sure. they, they're so much fun. <laughs> well we have a camera hooked up that we're going to oh. show exactly what the crafter can use these for. I've got one of our uh, books here and you know instructions are so important. Now look at this just how nicely that can focus right in on what you need. Now, if you're looking at uh, one inch versus 11 inches, this could be critical. That is now, a big difference. Let me put it out of the focus. And now, you really can't see anything, but when you bring it back into focus, it's perfect every time. Now, Judy, I love these. This has been so much fun. Tell me something else. Do you have a website? Actually, we've just started one, and it is www.funspecs.com. Com. All right, we'll have to look that up. Yes, yeah, please do. Come back and see us again, all right? Thank you. When we return, I'll be back with Paulette Jarvie and some exciting new kits starring one of the world's favorite characters, Winnie the Pooh. Getting all tangled up in your needlework projects? If thread tends to become twisted while you stitch or sew, just drop the needle and let it hang. The weight of the needle will help it untwist itself. Wouldn't it be wonderful to fill up your child's room with friends that never have to go home? Well, Hot Off the Press is here today with a hot new idea that you probably weren't expecting. Well, Catherine, you're exactly right. We are just delighted to be able to bring Pooh and the friends from the Hundred Acre Wood into crafting. So Hot Off the Press has gone decoupage. We've gone decoupage and shrink plastic and rub-ons and all sorts of crafting things. Wow, these <laughs> are incredible. Now, these are books, but they're more than just books. They contain product as well, which allows you to take the instructions for the crafts and also have the product with it, and then you can just go wild and do whatever you want. Paulette, one of my favorite things about Hot Off the Press is that that special touch that you have. You think it through, <laughs> you make it as beautiful or wonderful or adorable as it can be. Look at this chair, what a perfect example. What, and this is really a good start, is that the characters are large. They're probably about eight, 10 inches tall. We did that on purpose in the decoupage book because uh, there are, in our other works, we have to make the characters smaller in some of the other books that we'll be showing you. But this was an opportunity to make large pieces and the paper mache box that you're seeing right now with Eeyore on it. And uh, we also have the hanging pieces, which all types of wood work perfectly, of course, with decoupage and the ability to personalize them, which have, again is part, we craft because we want to create things, but we also want to create them our own way. So <laughs> these are all decoupaged right on this painted wood. Yes. That's yes. wonderful. So these are beautiful papers. Let's peek at the book okay. for just a moment. You're going to first start with some instructions, some basic information, some basic techniques, and then we give um, about a dozen projects. Then we get into the papers, the decoupage papers, and they're printed on one side, of course, so that you can cut them out. And this is what I mean by the large graphics. Um, in this book, there are 52 images. And when we count them, we go like, this is one, two, we count this as three, this is four, and this is five. So we're not counting each little thing, so right. you really get a lot oh, more. Oh, yeah, you get a lot, you get a lot more than that. So I have to say, the quality of the paper is so nice. It works very, very well, and if um, you remember that frame back there, it said friends on it. Well, we're even giving you the large friends. Oh, this is great, and you know, the, the detailed instructions have the most creatively simple techniques that you can you can add to your crafting you really like skills. That, didn't you? I do, I do. The the line work and you know just the simple doodads and the color combinations really make these fun. I well, mean, let's show that. Okay. Will, will you pull over the paper mache box? Sure. And as you can see around the edge, this is just a black pen, just sort of Doodles. scribbling and yeah. doodling, yeah, with some dots. 
these other little icons, the bees and the butterflies, are so fun to add. And then you can see how they've been added on the side of the right. box, again, with more of the squiggle lines. And that's kind of what you're talking about with those you know, extras. As I look at these little butterflies, I start looking at your shrinket display over here. We have ah. a few moments. Let's talk about those. OK. The shrink plastic comes in a book a little differently. It opens up, and lo and behold, the shrink plastic sheets are inside. And they're all printed on. That's right. great. So then what you do is you place them on top of the image, and then you just color away. Oh, how perfect. Put Paula. it in the oven. And again, here are ideas that you can use. In this particular case, we put Pooh as a necklace. But you could certainly put him on a switch foam board, a uh, craft foam switch plate, make a foam uh, picture frame, maybe on a book a lot of different applications so that little character can go anywhere you want him to go. So continuing the Winnie the Pooh theme with a very detailed specific look mm -hmm. is going to add so much more um, I don't know pleasure, joy, fun <laughs> to your child's bedroom. <laughs> Friendliness because the Pooh characters have been our friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're just perfect for especially that environment although many adults collect Wonderful. the characters. I love this pencil too Paulette. This is great. Well you know we need to take a little break okay. and when we get back we'll see what else is new. We'll have more. We're back with Paulette and more wonderful ideas featuring Winnie the Pooh. Right. Paulette, what else do you want to look at? Well, we have four books, actually, in our Get Acquainted Caliper, and the next two we're going to show are stencils and rub-ons. Great. Now, a few minutes ago, we looked at the decoupage, which was so beautiful and so much fun, then the shrink plastic. Right. So now, as you said, rub-ons and stencils. Now, this is a super value kit today, so today, if you order this kit, you get free shipping and handling, which, boy, you can't go wrong with that. Such a deal. I know. <laughs> but, you know, more Winnie the Pooh, Paulette. Yes. And in the stencils, this book is very much like the shrink plastic, where it opens out, you get in basic instructions and then other ideas. But inside this pocket, we have two stencils. Oh, great. OK, so you get a lot of, of ways to use them. and. Um, I just learned this, so I have to share it. You know, if you guys already know and think I'm silly. But this is a cosmetic sponge, and in doing the characters, we've really done them as a solid silhouette. And this has just been a great tool just to dab in. So that technique is also in the book. But just <laughs> she was sure so have. excited. She's like, guys, yes. you can use these cosmetic sponges on our stencils. She goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> but here are some of the projects. And we're using the stencils as typical stencils, but also doing them out of paper. Paula, let me interrupt for a second and uh -huh. ask you about how did you get Winnie the Pooh's face on there so perfectly? Oh, well, what we found with Pooh was that you really needed to see a little bit more detail. And so we're showing you in the book just the face. And you can see it's such a simple little face on, this is like on the flower pot. And then on the bag, um, it's inside here so that you can see it. So you could trace or transfer that, and exactly. then you could really get that poo look. Yes. Oh, see, these examples are so much fun, whether you're doing scrapbooking or decorating rooms in your house using paper silhouettes or actually painting in the shape. Or using craft foam. That's another oh, good craft material. Foam. So oh, my gosh, applique. <laughs> it goes forever. <laughs> This is fabulous. And that was something we also found with Eeyore's. Just a little more detail worked very nicely with him. Great. Now, so. what about these rub-ons? OK, the rub-ons. Again, the same format. There's one sheet, but it has 14 images in it. And I'll pull it out here. And I have to confess something. I was so intent on getting lots of patterns that step number one, and again, the directions are inside, is that you need to cut around the image because they are close together. And as I look at this, there are so many more than 14 <laughs> images. But you're just so generous, Paulette, with your, with your great ideas and with what you offer on this page. Well, and the, what is fun about this is, again, like some of the other materials, is that you can use them on so many projects or types of materials. So here's glass, paper. Uh, metal, wood, paper mache. You're going way too fast here, Paula. <laughs> let's, let's slow down. You know, I want to use rub-ons and do my fingernails when we're done. Can we do that? Uh, we'll do that. How about with little bees? Okay, we'll do that later on today. <laughs> but right now, I really want to let everybody see how versatile and how simple a rub-on. You just use the um, the craft applicator stick, or <laughs> otherwise known as a popsicle Go stick. Go out and have a popsicle. Yeah. And again, to use some very simple detailing, and on this paper mache box, how just a black pen, and we show these dip dots with a pencil, 
and just how that adds such detail. But again, having more images and on this metal box, you can see on the sides where there are the little ladybugs and doing the dots behind the ladybug. Now this is a mat uh, for photographs, but they've made it into, uh, put magnets on the back to go on a refrigerator. Oh, I love that idea. So it's a neat way to go. And you can see the little uh, memory bo book here with, again, just broken line dots, but how fun it is to have the additional embellishments, the, the little bees, and of course we're doing dots behind them. And all of these techniques are in the book, how to yes. do the squiggles and the doodles and the dots and the little cross hatches. <laughs> My That'd be a good book title. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's easier than you think. It is easier. <laughs> um, my favorite is the the glass oh. because I love the way it looks on glass. But you know what? There's more. I know because <laughs> hiding under here. Oh. Don't forget to ask the operators because you also have these Mickey projects. Mickey and French shrink plastic. Again, you'll get two pieces of, of pre-printed shrink plastic. Okay. So it's the same, you know, the same formula. And, one, and once again, you teach great project instructions along with everything that comes with it. Here's some stencils. Okay, and Mickey and Friends rub-ons. Right. Oh, look at that on the lunchbox. These are so much fun. Everyone is going to just love these, Paulette. Lots of choices. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> when knitting or crocheting, always read all the instructions before you start a project. Make sure you have enough yarn, are using the right number of strands, and have checked your gauge. Pay attention to italics. They usually mean special instructions. Hey, it's that time again. Watch and win. And today the Watch and Win prize is the beautiful Butterflies Get Acquainted kit, a $22.99 value. And let's find out who the winner is. Okay, okay. I'm going to dig way deep in here. Let's see who I get. Ah! She's from Waco, Texas, Patty Davenport. All right, Patty. Congratulations, Patty. Just call us up anytime today at 1-800-825-3363 to claim your Watch and Win prize. And a cool prize it is. It is. It's wonderful. Now, speaking of cool, you're wearing that great vest. Let's talk about that a little bit more, well, Heidi. we want to thank uh, Karen Sweeney Justice uh, from Oneida, Tennessee. She was the one that won the Dress Heidi contest today. That's right, and we also want to thank Carol Jasinski for her dress, Skyler little dress and hat. They're adorable. just adorable. <laughs> so what are we doing tomorrow, Patty? Well, we're going to create handmade stamps out of fun foam. And Kathleen Sands will crochet afghan for all seasons. You're really going to love the good night's sleep you're going to get with some of these celestial pillowcases. Mm. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.